Jenny Thomas said that she would happily, that she's looking forward to clearing up the record and talking with you guys. Big part. Jenny Thomas basically said that she would be looking forward to clearing up the record and talking with you guys. I know you said it's time to talk so to her. So when did she say this? During the hearing, while you guys were in there. I haven't heard it. But she did. So when you, when you hear that she what says that. do you have about Jenny Thomas's role in her communications with John Eastman? Well, look. We have sent uh, Ms. Thomas a letter asking us to come and talk to the committee. If what you You've say is okay. You've uh, sent it already. Wait, wait, listen Sorry. to me. What you said, if she responded while the hearing was going on, that she wants to come, we look forward to her coming. Good. Public testimony. But I just want to make sure you already sent the letter. Do you want to so here's the breakdown of what's happened here. It was reported yesterday that the January 6th committee had obtained email correspondence between Ginny Thomas, the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, and John Eastman, the lawyer who's played a key role in trying to get Pence to block certification of the electoral votes. Now, day three of the January 6th committee hearings focused heavily on Eastman's role, wherein he surfaced completely baseless legal theories that the vice president has the ability to refuse to certify electoral votes, which begs the question, why didn't then Vice President Al Gore simply anoint himself the winner of the 2000 election if that was the case? Weird, huh? Now, in the hearings, Eastman's theories were heavily criticized, including by Judge Ludig, whom Eastman himself clerked for. There was no basis in the Constitution or laws of the United States at all for the theory espoused by Mr. Eastman at all. Judge Ludig had also sounded the alarm on what it would have meant if Eastman's plan had worked, which Liz Cheney read during the hearing. If Dr. Eastman and President Trump's plan had worked, it would have permanently ended the peaceful transition of power, undermining American democracy and the Constitution. If the country does not commit to investigating and pursuing accountability for those responsible, the court fears January 6th will repeat itself. Every American should read what this federal judge has written. For the guy who Eastman clerked for to say that goes to show just how deranged Eastman truly is, which is why it's especially dangerous for the wife of a Supreme Court justice to be conferring with that guy. Like, just so we're clear, Eastman's plan was so radioactive that he himself requested a pardon from Trump for it. Even he knew how much legal exposure he had that he put, in writing, a request to be pardoned. So for Ginny Thomas to be conferring with that guy isn't exactly on the level. And look, it's not like Ginny Thomas hasn't been given the benefit of the doubt before. It's not like she hasn't escaped accountability so many times. We already know that she's pressed 29 Republican state lawmakers in Arizona to disregard Biden's victory in the state and quote, choose their own presidential electors. Her messages urge lawmakers to quote, stand strong in the face of political and media pressure and claim the responsibility to choose electors was quote, yours and yours alone, and that it was their responsibility to quote, ensure that a clean slate of electors is chosen. We also know that she was at the Stop the Steal rally, although she contends that she left before the insurrectionists made their way to the Capitol. And we know that she was texting Trump's then chief of staff, Mark Meadows, to overturn the election results, saying, quote, help this great president stand firm, Mark, and you are the leader with him who is standing for America's constitutional governance at the precipice. The majority knows Biden and the left is attempting the greatest heist of our history. I mean, this woman is a walking, talking Facebook comment section on a Dan Bongino video. But all of that aside, let's not forget the most important point. She is the wife of a sitting Supreme Court justice. This is not normal and it's not okay. We're all sitting here pretending that the Supreme Court is some sacred, apolitical institution. This lady, married to a justice, is so far down the rabbit hole that she makes Lauren Boebert look normal. That's not true, but still. If this woman is so, so deeply involved in efforts to overturn the last election that she's reaching out to Trump's chief of staff, state legislators, and the lawyer who's devised an illegal and unconstitutional plan to block election certification, are we really just pretending that that's had zero impact on Clarence Thomas? And if it is your first day on earth and you are willing to give him the benefit of the doubt here, then consider too that Clarence Thomas was the lone dissent in the Supreme Court's January decision rejecting Trump's bid to withhold documents from the January 6th panel. Eight 
to one. Only Clarence Thomas decided that Trump should be able to withhold documents from the committee investigating his coup attempt on the US Capitol. A coup attempt for which his wife attended the pre-rally, a coup attempt for which his wife was advocating, a coup attempt for which she was in communication with the architect. So the idea that this man is not severely compromised is naive at best and criminal at worst. So at a bare minimum, the January 6th committee should absolutely move as quickly as possible to meet with Ginny Thomas, who said today in an exclusive interview with who else but the Daily Caller that quote, I can't wait to clear up misconceptions, I look forward to talking to them. Now with regard to what those misconceptions are, I can't say. But I can promise you that this committee doesn't seem to have many. This committee seems to have all of its facts in a row. So the idea that they're wrong, and yet Ginny Thomas, who probably still believes that Hillary Clinton is running a child sex trafficking ring under a pizza place, is right, is just painfully stupid. So whether she actually talks to the January 6th committee remains to be seen, since it turns out that a pretty good number of these insurrection insiders talk a big game at first, only to slink away when it counts. But the January 6th committee has subpoena power and they should absolutely use it. And in the meantime, and this is another topic for another video entirely, but the idea that the Supreme Court is in any way legitimate is a joke. And if Democrats are able at any point to get a workable majority in Congress, the idea that we should continue pretending that the number Number nine is sacrosanct and that we're somehow forced to respect precedent when it comes to the court, while Republicans are able to absolutely decimate every precedent they can get their hands on, is an asymmetry that we should have no intention of defending. And by that I mean we should absolutely and unequivocally expand the court. But one thing is clear from all of this, Ginny and Clarence Thomas both are a danger to our system of government. That he's a Supreme Court justice and she's the wife of a justice doesn't mean that they're above the law, it means they should be accountable to it. So either the Democrats and the DOJ start demanding some accountability, or that Ginny and Clarence Thomas's will only be emboldened to do more. To see more videos like this, click the subscribe button right here on the screen. And to support my work beyond that, check out my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, where I cover the week's most important stories and interview the biggest players in the world of politics, including President Biden, Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, Elizabeth Warren, Katie Porter, and so many more. The link is also right here on this screen. And finally, to take action yourself and sign petitions on the most important issues, go to briantylercohen.com petition.